Welcome one and welcome all to my big boy homage timepiece collection video. Hey, I'm going to show you my wrist real quick. This is my uh, Fallout Quartz watch. Uh, really cool looking watch with a leather band there. I picked up for like maybe 50 bucks, I think, maybe a little less. But uh, I do sport that every now and then. I got my Fallout attire on today, so we're ready to roll. And today we're going over homage watches. I know that term kind of makes some people cringe when I say that, but you know, it is what it is. It's not a direct copy. If you think about it, there's a ton of changes on each one. So in my humble opinion, these are the homages uh, to the greats that I uh, have collected for myself, and I really love these watches. So I thought I'd sh share them with you today. Let's get started. So first up, we have the legendary Moon Watch. However, this is not so legendary. This is the Courge Sports Chronograph model number 3022, which you can pick up on AliExpress for about $60. You heard me correctly, 60 bucks gets you this look-alike Omega Speedmaster. So this has a Japanese quartz movement. Uh, it's an homage, of course, to the Omega Speedmaster, um, which uh, I actually happen to have right next to me here. So there you go. There's some side-by-side -side comparison of the real deal and the fake deal. Um, so yeah, cool stuff. The Omega has a uh, 3861 uh, manual wind chrono movement in that one. Very cool. Uh, very, um, a much better in-house movement on this original, of course, um, but you're paying quite a bit more, and we'll get into that in just a second. But as you can see, those dials are very similar on these ones. I like the original better because it's a little bit more defined. Um, I do, care, I do uh, appreciate that uh, definition in that one, and the finishing is definitely better on the original. Um, it's got some brushing there as you can see, but um, yeah, there's there's some uh, quite a bit of differences within the two of these uh, At a quick glance though. It does look very similar um, each one has its own uh, variants the uh, Case size across on the Courget is going to be 40 millimeters and then on the original it's 42 millimeters on your case thickness You got 13 over here on the Courget and then 14.3 on the original Omega So um, a definitely a little change there, not too crazy. This one has 30 meters of water resistance on the Courget. On the Omega, you're going to be looking at 50 meters of water resistance. Not that you need it on the moon, but there you go. Um, so then you have, uh, of course, the $60 price tag as opposed to the anywhere between $4,500 to $6,000 price tag for the Omega Speedmaster Professional, guys. So there you go. I'm going to show you the backs of these, and uh, this time I'll show you a couple more extra little features that I than I did before, and uh, we're going to show you the loom on these guys. So let's light them up. And take a look and what see what they're gonna look like with a little bit of uh, loom on these either one there we go as you can see the Omega Speedmaster just you know soars over the competition there <laughs> but uh, that's quite a bit more cash for just that little extra bit of loom a different movement and uh, some more uh, you know defined work uh, detail work on that watch but let's take a look at the backs of these briefly and then we'll move on to the next one uh, so on the uh, homage watch you're gonna have a very uh, plain stainless steel glossy black or glossy back I should say I'm sorry and then on the original we have of course the awesome text and the little engraving there that's that's very cool and it has words there we've gone over this before but there you go that's quite a bit different there of course um, but yeah two really cool watches and if you want to sport something without getting robbed then go with the Courget because um, if somebody sees this and they know what it is you might be getting uh, getting tossed. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this first one. We'll move on to the next. Here is the Courget on wrist, and I have a six and three quarter inch wrist, so that's what it will look like um, when you sport that homage to the Omega Speedmaster. Next up, we're showing you the Feiss Classical Mechanical Watch. This is an FM019 model and uh, it has an automatic Seagull 1612 movement. It is the homage to the Royal Oak, AP Royal Oak, that is, the big boy. Um, this one, uh, the original, I'm sorry, has an in-house movement of 3126-3840 uh, automatic movement. It does have 365 parts on the original and contains 59 jewels. Um, it has the, uh, this one has the familiar waffle cone, of course, uh, dial and date complication of the AP. Um, the, this one has a sapphire crystal with AR coating and the band has a nice refraction property there. 
Um, I believe it's scratch resistant as well, but um, some pretty nice features for what you're paying there, I guess. Just, I'm not a huge fan of it, and I'll talk about that in just a bit, but uh, for the most part, this is a really good looking homage to that uh, Royal Oak AP. Um, this one has a 42 millimeter case, whereas the original has a uh, 41 millimeter case. This has a case thickness of about 12 millimeters. The original is a 10.4. So the original has quite a bit thinner uh, case on the on the edges there from, from bottom to top. Um, this one has a 30 meter water resistance. I wouldn't take this in water though for my the life of me. Um, but the original has a 50 meter water, water resistance and that's probably even better reason not to take that one in the water for the uh, price tag on that. So this one you can pick up on AliExpress and I failed to mention that earlier, I apologize, but you can get most of these, if not all of these watches here on AliExpress. So um, pay attention to that and there'll be some good deals on there sometimes. Uh, this, uh, this of course was 160. The original watch goes for anywhere between 25 to 50,000 dollars for this original Royal Oak. So as you can see, there's, it's got some good brushing on the side there a little bit. Um, I'm going to take it apart and let you look at the back. Here's a butterfly clasp looks like on this guy. Um, one thing I didn't like about this one too much was the edges. They're very rough and they weren't really well um, well done on the edges. It, it rips the hair right off your arm. Plus, it is a little bit scratchy. It kind of it feels like it scratches your arm up a bit. But man, that refraction does look really cool on it, doesn't it? They did put a uh, exhibition case back on this one. Um, not a big fan of that. It's it's really plain, and I'm not not into that as much. Being that it's a seagull movement, I don't think they needed to really. Uh, show that off too much. So there you go, guys. That is the Royal Oak Homage. Uh, go pick it up if you like, if you like the style. Not my thing 100%, but uh, I guess it's something that I don't mind wearing every now and then with the right attire. And there you go. There's your AP Royal Oak Homage on wrist. A little bit big for my six and three quarter inch wrist, but um, it's not too bad. And I forgot to show you before, but uh, let's see, this has a little bit of loom to it. So let's show you what that looks like as well. Not anything spectacular by any means, but definitely a little bit of loom on that one. So if you want to pick that up, that will be uh, seeable in the dark, but not for too long. And next up, we're looking at the Octopus Pilot Watch, model number OCT04. And this one here is a very striking resemblance to the original. It has a Seagull PT5000 automatic movement with 25 joules, um, which is a clone of the ETA. 2824 and Salida SW200 minus one joule. So there you go. Um, it is, of course, homage to the Oris Big Crown Pointer date. And uh, looky here, what do you know? I happen to have the original watch it is trying to emulate. So there you go, guys. There's the side-by-side -side comparison. Um, of course, as you can see, this one has a really nice uh, stainless steel case with a bronze bezel, whereas this one is completely bronze um, on the back as well, bronze buckle, as opposed to a stainless steel. However, this is an aftermarket strap, but the, on the original, it does have stainless steel as well. Um, wow, look at the look at the similarities. Very, very close. It, the only thing this one is missing is the pointer date and the uh, the 24 hour uh, markers, I believe, is what I'm seeing there. But man, that's that's a pretty stark resemblance to the original uh, that I would say. I must say so myself. Um, so let's get into a little bit of the information about it. Um, the original movement is a Salida uh, two. It's a SW200 on this one. So there's your differences in movements as opposed to the PT5000. You got a Salida in this one, a real one. That is. Uh, not a Chinese made one. So uh, very similar dial. I think it's a little bit less busy, of course. It's got a double domed sapphire face with a Swiss AR coating on this octopus here. So that's nothing to scoff at with that. Um, this one has a 40 millimeter case, whereas the original has either a 36 or a 40 millimeter. I, I opted with the 40 millimeter case on this one. Um, it has a 12 millimeter case thickness on the octopus. Uh, as opposed to the 12.5, so it's a little bit thicker on the uh, real deal there. Um, so uh, 100 meters of water resistance on the octopus, you're looking at about 50 meters on the original. So this one actually has it beat with water resistance. However, with the bronze casing, I don't recommend you go diving with this one at all. Um, and of course, their price tag, you're looking at 265 on this one, and you're looking at anywhere between 12 to 1300 for the original. So quite a big price difference, but of course, AliExpress uh, has always got your back covered. Uh, we'll show you the backs of these as well real quickly here. Might as well, right? Let's take the strap off here. The uh, strap on the original Oris does kind of resemble this one more too. So they've really done a good job capturing the original feel of that Oris. Um, it looks really nice on the back. I like the way they did the uh, case back on this one, the exhibition case that is. 
nice rotor, nice looking rotor. But on the original, of course, it is far better looking, and I'll show you that next. And then we'll get into the loom on that. I'll show it to you on my wrist, and we'll move on for you. So, quickly, here's the back of the Oris with the customary red rotor. I love that. It's so cool. Definitely cooler case back on the original. But um, it's always nice when I can show you the original as opposed to the homage right next to each other. It's I don't have, I only got a couple here, but it, it is fun. And um, I love I love the Oris watch. Some people not, aren't into this style. It's kind of more of a dressy style watch, but I really do like it. And they did a really bang up job on this particular guy here. So uh, let me show you the loom on this real quick and then we'll move on. I think the loom on the homage is actually a little bit better than the loom on the original watch. And I'll show you what I mean here. That one, pretty nice and bright. You can see quite a bit of what's going on there. Let me get the original one here. We'll shine it on that. I mean, this one's good too. I'm not gonna say it's not, but yeah, the other one is a little bit brighter. I mean, yeah, definitely. Even with a little bit more light, it's still, yeah, The other it seems like the other one's a bit brighter there. So uh, very, very cool that they uh, upped their game on the loom too. I'm really impressed with this octopus. So if you like the Oris Big Crown Pointer date, uh, this is the one you want to go with for sure. And here is your octopus on wrist. No tentacles required. Very, very classy looking homage to one of my favorite uh, classy looking watches, which is the Big Crown Pointer Date. There you go. Very nicely done, guys. Keep pushing these out. I'm loving it. Okay, moving on to our next big boy. We are looking here now at the Reef Tiger Aurora Deep ocean watch and man this is fancy looking i really really like this homage a lot it looks a lot like the original um, i did a couple i did one little uh, upgrade to it and i'll show you what that is in a sec this is the rga 3035 um, it has a Reef Tiger RT7901 movement in this particular guy um, this is of course the homage to the Da, 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 da. blanc pond 50 fathoms which was the first dedicated dive watch the original movement in that watch is an in-house 1315 uh, with a power reserve of about, of about 120 hours. So yeah, Jacques Cousteau favorite right there. Uh, great, great watch on the original one. Um, this one has a sapphire crystal face, which is really cool. Um, it has a 44 millimeter case size as opposed to the original, which had a 45 millimeter case size. It comes with this really nice sailcloth strap. Um, and, and it actually came with a regular uh, buckle uh, on the back, on the clasp, but I actually put this extra, uh, extra fancy one on myself, more, more, more so to emulate the original. I'll show you that in just a sec. Uh, it does have a 15.2 millimeter case thickness, which is pretty thick, but it still looks great. It has a 15.4 millimeter thickness on the original, so just a few points off. Uh, 200 meters of water resistance on this homage. Very nice there, and the original has a 300 meter water resistance. The only thing I didn't like about this watch so far is that the bezel makes a noise when you push on it, and it's right, right there. So here, I'll let you hear it. That's, I don't know if it's just mine that does that, but I don't like that. It has a good bezel, uh, sounding bezel to click, but I just don't like that it's it feels like it's not quite quite finished or something. It's it's very strange, but it does have a nice uh, nice bezel click to it. it feels feels really good. Um, a couple of more things about this. This one is about two hundred and sixty dollars on AliExpress, um, whereas the original goes anywhere from ten thousand to thirty five thousand dollars. So, yeah, uh, I'd say go with this one um, because otherwise you might be broke. Uh, so here you here you go. There's that clasp I put on it, that little butterfly clasp. Um, very cool um, clasp. I, it actually has some machining there on it as well. Um, I got it off of Amazon. I think they were like $11 or 15 bucks, somewhere right around there for this extra little clasp that I put on this watch. But really adds that original feel to it because the Blanc Pond, of course, has that as well. Um, here is the back of this one. So you can kind of get a, a, a brief overview of that uh, as opposed to the original. Really nice, man. Really nicely done. This is a great looking homage. The only thing I, like I said, I didn't like was that was that bezel action there that has some has a little bit of a click to it as you push on it. Not really my thing, but uh, hopefully they can uh, they can maybe in a future model get rid of that. But it's nice, like I said, nice sailcloth strap. Very beautiful watch through and through. Um, definitely recommend this one for your homage collection. And uh, if I could hold it right side up, maybe you could see it. There you go. There it is. Oh, let me show you some loom. It's it's awesome. You can't. You gotta you gotta see this loom on this Reef Tiger. They did a, a bang up job on the loom. 
it just really pops. There, check that out, guys. Oh my gosh. Yes, that is a nice looking homage. And so moving on to the wrist shots. And on wrist, this one pops like a mofo named Jacques Cousteau. I love it, guys. What a great, great homage. Of all my homage watches, this has to be one of my favorites in the top three by far. Pick one up uh, while you still can. And for our fifth installment, we are looking at a Rokos Auto Mechanical RO139 model. This is has a Seagull 1612 movement and, of course, is the homage to the Patek Philippe Nautilus 5711. Of course, that's exactly what this looks like. Pretty, pretty close homage. It's, it's, this has quite a few similarities to the original as well, including that band. I believe the band is extremely similar too. So um, if you want to talk about the logistics of the original movement, you're looking at an automatic caliber 26-330SC uh, in-house mechanical movement on the original uh, Nautilus. So this particular guy here has a mineral crystal front, so no, no sapphire front, but man, this one really does uh, portray the original so well. I really like this one a lot. Um, this one has a 40 millimeter case size, whereas the uh, original has uh, also a 40, 40 millimeter case size. So uh, exactly this, that's probably why it looks so similar, because it's exactly the same size on the case. Has a 12 millimeter thickness on this one. However, the original has an 8.3 millimeter, so it's extremely small when it comes to uh, thickness this direction. Um, it has 30 meters of water resistance, and then the original on this one has 120 meters of water resistance. Um, so you can pick these up at AliExpress, of course, for around $180. The originals, of course, going for anywhere between $22,000 and $190,000 I've seen them go for. So, uh, you know, lately the watches have been falling a bit in price, but um, I think that uh, you could probably pick one up for, for pretty cheap now if you were to look for one. But I don't know, man. This this is a pretty close-looking uh homage to that to that watch don't like the open case back again on this one uh, just doesn't quite work with that seagull movement but um, it, it's done fairly nicely the edges on this band aren't as rough as uh, the um, the AP Royal Oak uh, homage over here um, so it feels a lot better on the edges this one definitely is is wears a lot a lot nicer and I believe it has a little loom so let's check that out for you next and see what we got yeah it has some loom looks like a blue loom yeah this one is definitely a blue loom on this one as you can see there so yeah really cool guys i i recommend this one over the the ap royal oak homage by far i really like it i think it was really well done for what it is definitely so pick this one up and i'll show it to you on wrist next wears really well on the wrist as you can see uh, just a fantastic looking homage. Um, this is definitely one of my faves. Um, a little story with this one. I actually re received two of these. I bought one and it didn't work, so I had to send it back. Uh, and then I got another one and it, and it works just great so far. So, um, I don't know, maybe a little bit of quality control issues with the Rokos, but not too bad. And definitely one to pick up if you love this style. So feast your eyes on this beauty here. This is definitely in my top three favorites in my homage collection of my watches. Um, really cool applied indice on that San Martin. Oh man, just a beautiful looking watch and it has a little special extra here I'll show you in a bit. So this is the San Martin Turtle Diver, AKA the Black Warrior. Um, 6105 on the model number here. Um, it has an NH35A mechanical movement in this in this guy here. This is an homage to the Seiko Turtle SRP777 with the original movement of an automatic Seiko 4R36. Um, this one has a sapphire crystal with DLC plating on the case and an anti-reflective face um, with also, yep, red loom on this one and it's it's a bit orange actually but it's it's it does have a red tint to it um i think the loom could have could have been a little brighter on this one it can it does fade fairly quickly so it's kind of a letdown but it is my only watch with red loom so let's show you that real quickly here because that is a must see really cool looking loom in the dark at least for just a little while it doesn't last that long but there you go a red loomed watch man that looks like sark from tron right that's really cool if you were sark this would be your watch for sure so let's try on the light again and we'll talk about it a little bit so on this particular one it has a 42 millimeter case size as opposed to the 45 millimeter case size on the original it also has 13 millimeter case thickness as opposed to a 13.3 on the original 
so the original is a little larger. Um, it does have this one has 200 meters of water resistance, and I really like the San Martin watches. They've really gone above and beyond on most of these. Um, this, of course, uh, uh, on the original was 200 meters as well, so it matches that on water resistance. And then uh, the price on this one for AliExpress, $220, guys. Really screaming deal on this watch. I feel um, the original's price is anywhere, anywhere between 325 to 500. But I'll be honest, I actually like this watch better than the original my personal opinion so let me show you the back of this briefly this has a solid case back here and then like a kind of like a rubber strap here as you can see so let's get that out of there and pretty pretty plain looking case back but very very cool nonetheless i do love it just a really nicely done watch uh, again on that applied indice it looks really nice there got some writing there at the bottom a date complication and, ni and a fairly nice looking uh, nh35 sweep there too so guys check let's check it out on wrist so folks, not a huge Seiko Turtle fan, but this one on wrist is the exception. I really, really like this watch. This is a watch you'll wear with like something like a Marvel t-shirt or just something really like a black t-shirt, something really nice. But this really pops, guys. I definitely recommend this. They have some other colors as well. I believe there's a green and a, and a blue one as well. But I really had to go with the red because, I mean, who has red loom in their collection besides this guy? Here is another San Martin gem of a watch right here. This is the San Martin Vintage 6200. It's a SN004-Q-B model. This one has a PT5000 movement. Um, there is an SW200, which is the Salida movement, available for this one as well. But this particular one has the PT5000 movement. And as you can see, that sweep is very nice on it. Uh, it emulates the Salida movement, but it is Japanese made instead. Um, very cool though, guys. This is the homage, of course, to the uh, Tudor Black Bay, uh, which looks very sim similar as well. So really cool looking stuff there. The original movement is a MT5601, uh, self-winding mechanical movement with a bi-directional rotor system. So that's really sick on the original, what you get with the movement there. Um, this has a sapphire crystal with AR coating right here. Um, it has a 38 millimeter case size. The original is a 41. And uh, the 13 millimeter case size on this one is a little, little uh, thin as compared to the 14.8 on the original. Um, this has 200 meters of water resistance and so does the original Tudor Black Bay. Um, you can pick this guy up on Alley for about 340 and the original price of the uh, Tudor Black Bay you're looking at about three to four thousand dollars so good pricing here on this particular one. I actually put this aftermarket strap, strap on I think it looked a lot better than the uh, one that came with it which was kind of a dark strap I believe but I will show you the uh, back of this as well. Before I do that let's give you some loom love real quickly here with a little lights camera action here oh yeah looks really nice very very good job on that the bezel looks really nice with a good click as you can hear really nice soft click but very effective and that loom lasts a long time so it's very very well done on the loom let's take a look at the back for you real quickly it does have the bronze buckle which i actually transferred to this strap uh, so it would uh, match the casing of course the uh, case has a stainless steel back here, but of course bronzing on this area here. So very cool, as you can see. Um, I, I believe most of these crowns are uh, stamped and signed as well. Very nice looking watch though. Let's get it on wrist for you next. And the Tudor Black Bay as opposed to Caucasian Bay on wrist. There you go guys, check it out. Looks really, really nice. Very classy looking watch. Um, if you have some nice looking clothes, this one really, really brings out the, uh, really pops with your with your attire. So there you are, I love this one. Price points where it's at. I mean, it's a little bit pricey, I guess, for San Martin, but uh, definitely worth it in my opinion. It's just very well done. Wish the, it would have applied the, uh, the San Martin logo on there. It's actually just printed on. Um, that would have been cool to have an applied indice there, but it is what it is. There are applied markers and they look really nice and the sweep's great. There's really nothing to complain about here for the most part. It's a great one. This next guy is called the Sea Stern Diver watch and it's I guess it's a diver uh, called a diver because it has about 200 meters of water resistance which is the sweet spot but I don't know if I'd be diving with this one it just doesn't it doesn't quite do it for me so anyway this has a NH35A automatic movement um, it is the homage of course to the Grand Seiko Heritage SBG R307 
Um, the original movement of, of that watch was a 9S68 uh, automatic uh, movement. This has a domed sapphire crystal on it, as you can see. Very, very uh, nice looking and very similar to the Grand Seiko watches. Um, this one does not have any loom, so I won't be able to show you that today. But uh, for the most part, this watch really pops and it does give off that Grand Seiko vibe very, very well. Even the strap definitely has that Grand Seiko vibe. Unfortunately, it is not stamped Grand Seiko. It is stamped Sea Stern right there with a the little Starfish logo. Um, again, I love the indices. They really, they really catch the light nicely. On this one has a date complication man really really nice overall uh, looking watch for sure it's very smooth feeling no 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 really really rough edges definitely a lot heavier than the seikos usually the seikos are titanium case this is a stainless steel so got a difference there um, it has a 40 millimeter case size as opposed to the 42 millimeter um, this is a gray face um, which uh, they actually have different ones they have a blue they have a yellow and I believe they have a green as well, like a bluish green. Um, but I ended up opting for the gray. Um, there's also a white face, but I already have a white faced Grand Seiko in my collection. So I'm not going to, uh, I didn't want to have two that looked exactly the same. I think the gray was, is a really smart looking uh, dial for that one for sure. Um, it has a 14 millimeter thickness as opposed to the 13.1. Some good brushing there on the side looks like. And then also uh, the 200 meters water resistance opposed to the 100 meters of water resistance on the original. Um, these go for about $230, so they're a bit pricey on AliExpress, but um, they're definitely nice. If you like the Grand Seiko line at all, you should like these ones. They, they do look really good. I'll show you the back here. The original price of the Grand Seiko goes for around $2,500 to $5,000, so definitely a lot a lot better price that you're looking at for this one. Not a huge fan of the back, open case back on this one. It's it's okay. Um, it has a little bit of extra stuff, I guess, on there. So it's I'm not like really, really pissed off about it. But um, I, I don't know, maybe a solid case back would have, would have done this a little bit more justice. Let's get it on wrist and show you that. They see me rolling my sea stern. Yeah, guys, really cool looking on wrist. I love it. Um, you know, in certain light, you catch it just right, and it looks like it's almost a black face. So really cool and very classy looking watch. You can wear this with a co collared shirt, and you will be the talk of the town, even though you're not uh, the walk of the town, <laughs> because this one is uh, definitely affordable and something that anybody can pick up if they are so inclined. And good golly, Miss Molly, this one right here is, I think, my favorite of the bunch today. Uh, yeah, it's it's the best one. This one is such a good homage to what it is homaging. Um, man, I really like it. Look at that shine, the band. It's just perfection incarnate. Really like this one. We're talking about this one today. This is a Sujis Diver Grand Line Daytona Panda. Um, the movement on this is a uh, automatic 7750 Etta Valju movement, uh, which we'll talk about in just a sec. Um, this is, of course, the homage to the Rolex Daytona. Of course, we knew that. The 116500 Rolex Daytona. Um, this this movement, uh, this movement that I just mentioned, the Etta Valju, is the first movement used in the original Daytona. Uh, second being the Zenith El Primero, and then the third they used an original in-house 4130 caliber movement with about 44 joules. Um, so this this movement is actually the original Rolex Daytona movement in this homage. So <laughs> you pretty much have a, a Daytona here is, is what I'm trying to tell you. So that's really cool. Um, the, this has a sapphire crystal. It also uses the same screw down, screw down um, pushers right there, just like the original uh, Daytona does. Uh, it has a 40 millimeter case with, uh, and it's the, so it's the same exact size as the original at 40 millimeters on the case size, um, excluding the crown. It has a 14.5 millimeter thickness, which is thicker than the original, which sits at about a 12.2. Um, so a little bit different there, but not a big deal. And I actually kind of like it thicker on this particular one. Um, has 100 meters of water resistance, and that is the same water resistance that the Rolex Daytona has as well. So wow, this is fantastic. Now you'd think this would go for what? A thousand bucks maybe or so, maybe a little bit more at least. 
Nope, we're looking at 370 on AliExpress, guys. 370 gets you this beauty of an homage watch to the Rolex Daytona. Um, it does have loom, I'll show you that. The original price of the Daytona goes from anywhere between 30,000 to 50,000. So, oh my lord, guys, you, you have to get this one. You really do if you're an homage collector whatsoever. Um, here you go, here's some loom here. Uh, it does have loom as well, and it's not bad. It looks really good. I'm, I'm digging it. Uh, I love the blue loom there. If it was a little darker in here, you could see it better, but it does look great in the dark. And it is a good, good looking homage. Let's show you the back of this real quick. It has a really interesting way to open this. You, you open this here, and then you push up, I believe, from this side to get that opened. Oh, yeah, right here. Right here. You, right, that's where you unclasp it. So really, really cool, and it's a very nice, tight clasp on that. Um, solid case back there on this one. Nothing too fancy, but um, the front really sells it for me. I really like this watch, guys. This is definitely uh, the coup de grace in my collection of homage watches. And as you can see, the detail there is very nice. Um, I don't know about top, that saying top chronometer. I guess it's okay. It doesn't bother me too much. But that was something that bothers a few people with this particular watch. Um, but, it, but all in all, this is a gem. Probably my favorite. It is my favorite in the collection. Uh, yes, sir or madam, I would like the caviar with a nice Chianti. Uh, this is what you'd be saying if you were out eating dinner with this watch on, because everybody who looks, they'd be like, man, that guy's got a Daytona. What up? <laughs> right? This makes you look like you are blinging, even though you're not. And I love that. That's really cool, guys. Very, very nice watch. And like I said, might as well be a Rolex uh, in itself. Um, so pff, there you go. You can't go wrong with that one. Pick it up as soon as humanly possible. And for our last watch in this video today, it is a good one. This is the Sue Jess Pilot Racing Style watch. Um, usually comes with an orange band, but I, I replaced the band with that racing uh, Fomosa band, and I love it. It looks just so smart on this watch. Really, really pops really nicely. Um, this has a mechanical Seagull ST1901 um, a movement in it, and of course, it is the homage to, drum roll, the Breitling Top Time Deus, which has an original movement, um, which is an in-house movement of an ETA 7753, has a 40 millimeter case size as opposed to the 41 millimeter case size of the original, 13 millimeters of thickness on this guy and 14.2 on the original, um, 50 meters of water resistance here, only 30 meters on the Breitling, so a little difference there, and then the price of 205 on AliExpress. Can't go wrong with a 205 price tag on this one, especially when you see the back. You're going to love this one. Uh, original price of these watches go anywhere from about $5,000 to $7,000 for the Breitlings. Um, but there you go. I love the Fomosa straps. Always have. It's, it's, they're just always perfection for me, and, they, and they're so very comfortable. But look at that. Look at that innard to that watch. You cannot go wrong with that. That is uh, very, very beautiful. And definitely better even than the original Breitling Top Time Deus back um, is stamped with the st star there for suge uh, for um, suggest very nice guys so so amazing gosh I can't even get over how how great this watch is one of my faves in the top maybe two or three here in my collection we will get it on wrist for you and here is the extravagance on wrist for you and man looks really good with that strap looks really good all together um, close up it's just a beauty of a watch it really is so very nice case finishing on this one and i forgot to show you earlier but i'm going to show you the loom on this briefly it does have some it doesn't look bad it looks really good there we go as you can see it is a blue loom right there on the markers not extremely bright but hey gets the job done looks amazing um, guys thank you so much for watching this video today i really appreciate you guys this is a kind of a controversial subject when it comes to homage watches so I, I apologize if there's anyone that doesn't like these things and I kind of put it out there for you anyway um, you know there's a lot of people that do like these watches and there's a lot of differences in these watches as opposed to the original ones movements aside there are a ton of small intricate details that are completely different on these which make them in my opinion homage watches again thank you for tuning in let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do any individual reviews on any of these watches I'd be happy to do that and give you the deets on this stuff Again, thanks for tuning in and time peace out.